The speaker, Jacques, commences the monologue All the Worlds a Stage by proclaiming that life resembles a stage upon which men and women merely perform their roles. Throughout their lives, they assume various parts, much as the speaker does now. The majority of this soliloquy is devoted to delineating the seven ages of man. Life begins in infancy, progresses through childhood, and reaches its zenith during the phases of the lover, the soldier, and the judge. Subsequently, one experiences a decline, losing command of their faculties and ultimately becoming incapable of self-care. In As You Like It, Shakespeare employs the monologue to fundamentally compare life to a stage. His speaker, Jacques, posits that life is a stage upon which men and women are merely players, assuming different roles throughout their existence. This concept is partly rooted in medieval philosophy. The notion of the Seven Ages dates back to the 12th century, exemplified by a tapestry of King Henry V illustrating the seven stages of man. Medieval philosophers, for theological reasons, often constructed groups of seven, as seen in the Seven Deadly Sins. Thus, it is believed that the Seven Ages derive from these medieval philosophical traditions. The seven stages of life, as articulated by Jacques in All the Worlds a Stage, are delineated as follows. Infancy. The inaugural stage of man's life is infancy, characterized by the image of a crying baby, softly sobbing and spitting up in the caregiver's lap. Boyhood. This stage is depicted by the reluctant schoolboy, dragging himself unwillingly to school. Adolescence teenage. During this phase, Shakespeare presents the image of a melancholic lover, composing sorrowful verses for his beloved. Youth. The stage of youth is portrayed through the life of a soldier, embodying fearlessness in the face of daunting challenges. Middle age. The fifth stage is that of middle age, depicted through the figure of a judge or a legal practitioner, embodying wisdom and maturity. Old age. Preceding the final stage is old age, which transforms the robust voice of youth into a childish treble and whistling, rendering the body weak and the mind dependent upon others. Death. The concluding act of this seven-stage play of life sees the strange and eventful history end abruptly, leaving man with nothing. In the opening lines of All the Worlds a Stage, the speaker, Jock, introduces the famed declaration that lends its name to this celebrated monologue. He proclaims that all the world's a stage, and that those who inhabit it are merely players. This assertion establishes one of the most skillfully crafted conceits in English literature. Each individual, irrespective of their origin, aspirations, or circumstances, awakens each day to assume a role. They enter and exit the stage of life just as actors do. It is crucial to recognize that these lines were intended to be delivered on stage before an audience. The extended metaphor would resonate profoundly with those watching and listening. The actor on stage declares to the audience that they, too, are actors in the grand play of life. Before the listener becomes anxious about their own role, Jacques reassures them that a man or woman plays many parts throughout their life, much like an actor's varied career. The actor portraying Jacques is not solely Jacques but embodies many characters over time. In the fifth line of the monologue, Shakespeare introduces the intricate concept of the seven ages of humankind, beginning with their infant. As the speech unfolds, Jacques describes the progression of aging, the roles assumed, and the general characteristics at different stages of life. At one point, a person is a whining schoolboy and later a lover sighing like furnace. Life encompasses sorrows, ballads, and losses. One becomes a soldier, taking oaths of allegiance and seeking battles. This stage, marked by the trials of youth, 
is challenging and unavoidable if conscription demands. The young man grows a full beard like a pard, or leopard. Shakespeare also employs a vivid metaphor comparing the act of blowing a bubble to the perilous moment of facing a cannon's potential fire. Eventually, this metaphorical individual becomes the justice, or magistrate, embodying wisdom and moral authority. They possess wise saws, or proverbs, and modern instances, or legal arguments. In the sixth stage of life, he transitions into the pantaloon, dressed in the comfortable attire of old age. His youthful garments are now ill-fitting due to the weight lost with age, and his deep voice has reverted to the higher pitch of earlier years. The final stage of a man's life is his second childishness and mere oblivion. Here, he loses all that defined his adulthood, becoming helpless and dependent once more, akin to his early childhood. He is sans, or without, taste, eyes, and teeth. The concluding image is of a man devoid of everything, with all the intricate memories and details of his life faded into oblivion. In all the worlds a stage, Shakespeare contemplates the futility of humanity's existence. He delves into themes of time, aging, memory, and life's purpose. Through the central conceit that all individuals are mere players in a vast, uncontrollable drama, Shakespeare weaves these themes together. The monologue guides the audience through the stages of life, from infancy and childhood to an old age marked by roles such as lover, soldier, and judge, concluding with death as the individual reverts to a state akin to childhood and infancy.